Hello everybody and welcome back to some more BD Armoury. Today we're taking a look at a craft that, uh, well a craft that holds a very special place in my heart. I think probably mainly because it's the only military aircraft I've ever actually flown on, but um, that's by the by. I'm talking of course about the C-130 Hercules, or the Hercules C-130 depending on your outlook on life. Mostly a transport aircraft, not equipped with any kind of ordinary weaponry, um, or at least not at this stage in the video it isn't. Um, yeah, an absolutely iconic military aircraft, not least because in addition to its military role, it also does a lot of humanitarian stuff, delivering aid, acting as an evacuation vehicle, that kind of thing. As I said, an aircraft I'm very fond of. Anyway, all this came about because a little while ago, uh, one of my subscribers, uh, Josef Stalin, um, I love it when we steer clear of potential controversy, uh, left a comment in one of my videos asking if I could make an AC-130, so I thought, uh, well, let's make a C-130 and go from there. So this is it, my rendering of the Hercules. Um, you might be asking, which version of the Hercules did you go for? To which I'd say, that's a very good question and well done for asking it. Uh, let's move on. Um, no, it's, it, it, obviously I had to do the best I could with the parts uh, I had available to me in KSP and some other mods. Um, so it's kind of all and none. I think with the two drop tanks either side and the uh, the six bladed turbo props, it's probably closer to um, to the C-130J. But uh, it's just my my general take on the Hercules, and I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I think I probably could have done the wings a bit better, but it just got to that point where I thought either I call it finished now, or I'm just going to spend days tinkering with this thing. So this is it, my take on the Hercules. Anyway, I very much doubt you clicked on this video just to watch an aircraft sat on the runway whilst I jabber on about it for ages. Um, and also, at some point, we do need to get to the guns and explosions and murder and death. So uh, let's take this thing out for a spin, shall we? Right, let's get this thing rolling. Um, first things first, I'm going to turn on stability assist. I have designed the... Uh, Design the craft so that it it should fly okay without stability assist on, but for takeoff that's that's always a bit of a gamble. So uh, we'll just leave that on. Fire up the engines. I do like this little startup sequence they go through um, with the noises to match. Uh, I can't remember which mod I got these engines from. I'll look. I'll put a link uh, a list of the mods I I used in the description. But I just think think that's a nice little touch. Anyway, brakes off, throttle up, and off we go. It doesn't take much for this craft, but I'm going to throttle down. You just need to get to about 60 meters per second and pull back, and you're off. I think we can probably throttle down a bit more. Um, then if we just turn stability assist off, it's going to pitch up a bit because it's still going a bit faster than it would like. Just edge the throttle down slightly. Lovely stuff. Yeah. I, as I said, I have flown one of these uh, when I was with the Air Cadets. It's a long time ago now. Went up to RAF Lynham. Um, every RAF base I've been to has since closed, which <laughs> it's difficult not to take personally, you know. Um, but uh, no, we went up on a, on a Hercules. They didn't do the thing they sometimes do with cadets, which is strap strap them all into the seats in the cargo bay and then just fly around with the cargo ramp open. Um, let's just uh, start turning. But no, they were they were doing sort of touch and goes or bump and burns on the runway at RAF Lynham and um, they're taking the cadets up two at a time to, sta to stand on the flight deck whilst they did um, whilst they did that whilst they hold on to something sturdy and non-valuable um, but yeah I was I was one of the last to go up and I'm getting a bit twitchy because I know what my luck's like I'm just thinking I'll get it'll get to my turn and I'll go sorry we've run out of time better luck next time but no, I was the last one up, and I went up with the commanding officer of my air cadet squadron, and as I was with the CO, we were up there for about, a, a, I think it was a little over an hour, whereas everyone else had just got 15 minutes. So we got to stand on the flight deck, as I said, holding on to something not too delicate, as the as the, as the the Hercules just did bump, uh, touch and goes on the runway at Lynham. Even got to hand the uh, co-pilot a cup of tea, which was nice. That's uh, that's kill the throttle. I'll go in. For, I'll do a do a touch and go myself. We'll uh, we'll just come round here and land and take off again on this little stretch there. I won't go for the runway because, well, I'm horrific at runway landings. I'm good at landing, just not within a narrowly predefined strip of land. You know, 
don't hem me in with your rules and your stretches of tarmac. I'll land where I want. But it was a really, really, it was a kind of clear night and you could see the, um, see the lights of Swindon and Chippenham and all the glamorous places. And you could see, uh, I think, I think you could see like Bath and Bristol in the distance. So that was nice. Um, the other reason I've kind of got, I'm kind of very fond of the Hercules is uh, at university I had to, uh, there's a group of us had to, to do an outline design of like a lighter two engine version of the Hercules. Um, so yeah, it's still fond memories and a fond memories and a fond place in my heart. This uh, this aircraft. How are we doing? Losing a bit of height. We could probably do picking up a bit more speed. Let's get that gear down. How's that looking on the old radar altimeter? Just about 400 meters per 400 meters, I should say, not 400 meters per second. Start to level those wings out. Uh, speed's looking okay. Ground coming up to meet us steadily. So we can just start to flare in a second. And that'll all be good. Where's our shadow? There's our shadow, right beneath us. Where it normally is. Start to flare. Not too much. And then just throttle up. Get to about 60, pull back. And we're off again. So yeah, good stuff. Um, anyway, the, the request wasn't to build a C-130. The request was to build an AC-130. So uh, let's go strap some guns onto this thing. So this is it, my attempt at an AC-130. Now, when Yosef sent me the request, he did specifically ask for the variant with the uh, with the two Vulcan guns at the front and the 105 cannon at the back, which would make it either a 130E or an early 130H, um, either the Pavegis or the Spectre. Um, although, let's be honest, you've just strapped some guns to the side of a Hercules. Um, anyway, both those variants have a 40mm Bofors gun at roughly here. Uh, I couldn't find a suitable 40mm Bofors, so I've just stuck a, a 30mm chain gun there because it looks kind of right and we'll, um, we'll gloss over that from here on in. Uh, anyway, I had a hell of a time trying to get this to fly properly because, again, I wanted to make it so that it, it could fly without uh, stability assist on and that means you kind of need to get it balanced um, laterally. And having all these guns over one side adds quite a lot of weight and it needs balancing and so all the ammunition is on this side of the aircraft as well as quite a few clipped in fuel tanks just to try and balance the damn thing. But I've got it working now and uh, we're going to go take it up and test its guns out. And we're not doing it alone. We need um, we need a willing victim. So I have just put down one of my early, my very early tanks over here and that's just, just going to sit there and take a beating. So... Uh, I'll get this in the air and I will see you again in a second. So here we go then, once the AC-130 approaches its target or draws level with it, what it normally does, I'll switch the guard mode on now, um, is it goes into a banked turn. I'll need to apply some more power just to keep us upright. I'll just put on a notch of roll trim just to keep us from banking too far and it just circles the target or the target zone. You can see um, craft opening up with its 30mm cannon. Oh, there go the Vulcans! And it's lost its turret already. Yeah, so it just does this. I haven't quite got the... I haven't got quite got the uh, the uh, <laughs> the turn right, so we're, we're way off by this point, but um, yeah, in the, in the hands of qualified professionals, this is quite impressive. Uh, with me, not so much. Anyway, that's that's the gist of what the AC-130 does. Um, so uh, I want to set up a, a slightly more complex scenario, but um, before we do that, there's just one thing I want to try. Now, if you've watched any BD Army dogfight videos, you'll be familiar with the concept of a joust. Two craft fly straight at each other, guns blazing, each hoping the other one comes off worse for the experience. Um, but that's not quite how the old medieval jousts from which it takes its name kind of operate. In that one, you get two uh, competitors uh, going at each other slightly offset, and they will try and do their damage to each other as they pass, which um, 
isn't how you really can do things in BD Armoury, or at least it isn't unless you've got an AC-130, or more to the point, two AC-130s. Yeah, I've lined two of these up, kind of facing each other, but offset by about two to three hundred meters. I'm going to put guard mode on, set the autopilot going, and see what happens. Um, I had I had a hell of a time trying to get this to work because the BD Army autopilot doesn't like these engines. Um, it just it just will not throttle up with them. So I've had to do something of an ugly hack just to get this to work. Um, just keep an eye on this throttle gauge when I set the autopilot going. It's it's not pretty, but it works. Anyway, let's um, get these engines going. Um, guard mode. Yeah, so now I just press the autopilot and we see what happens. Here goes. Yeah, as I said, not pretty, but it works. And it's a good thing these can take off at, a, at low speeds, because otherwise I'd have to set them going about 10 miles apart. But anyway, as they get up to about 70 meters per second, they should pull back. Yep, get off the ground, select their weapons, and there we go. Oh. Oh, that was glorious. I mean, that was really, really stupid, but I'm so glad I did that. Um, I could probably quite happily do that over and over again until the end of the video, but um, I think we should move on to our next scenario. Did that, the other craft suffer any damage? Not really. Anyway, moving on. So we are under attack. A strike force of three tanks threatens to destroy the KSC and our defences are only two tanks. But um, we have an ace up our sleeve. We have the AC-130 who is going to rain death from above and hopefully turn things around for our forces. Um, I'm going to get all this going and I will see you again in a second. So battle has already commenced and we are here very nearly arriving at the danger zone. Um, question is, will we be able to get there in time before our tanks su succumb to overwhelming numbers? Well, not that overwhelming if I'm perfectly honest, but you know what I mean. The KSC taking something of a pounding there, and yeah, you bastard. Yeah, I think we need to we need to kill these guys and quick. Let's uh, let's set our guard mode on. Uh, well, I don't think we're anywhere near close enough to start laying down some fire, but um, closest one is 3.3 kilometers away. These tanks, yeah, just edging closer towards each other. Guns blazing. Any damage so far? Oh, we've lost, we've lost one turret already. That is not good news. Hopefully, that tank can distract, distract the others whilst we try and close and open up some gunfire with our AC-130. There goes the fire, and one of their tanks, I think, is probably in a little bit of trouble. And there we have it, one turret down, one tank effectively out of the fight. Now we go out with the howitzer, and now the 30mm cannon. We're laying everything we have down onto these enemies, and that's now two tanks down. Two tanks without a turret. Let's see what we can pull off here. The 30mm opens up again, still going for that same tank. Um, let's see if we can just get it to ignore those. So just one target left. There we go. Gunfire reigns in. It can't be too long before he succumbs now. How are my actual tanks doing? Still doing quite well. There's a pause. And... That is the last tank out. We have one tank remaining. All our opponents have been neutralised. And we are victorious. So as our AC-130 finishes off the attackers, uh, that will be all for today. I hope you've enjoyed it, everybody. So, uh, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.